respiration. We know that all living beings require oxygen to survive and also are well aware of the fact that the sustenance of life is impossible in the absence of oxygen. A common man understands respiration simply as the exchange of gases that is intake of oxygen and the release of carbon dioxide. However, scientifically, the process of respiration is much more complex. Respiration includes both A. Breathing that involves gaseous exchange implying the intake of oxygen from the atmosphere and the release of carbon dioxide and B. Cellular respiration which is the breakdown of simple food thereby releasing the energy inside the cells. This energy is released in the form of ATP. Types of Cellular Respiration Depending upon the availability of atmospheric oxygen, the cellular respiration is divided into two categories. These are Aerobic Respiration and Anaerobic Respiration. Let us now understand the two categories of respiration and the pathways involved therein. Aerobic Respiration the complete breakdown of respiratory substrates into carbon dioxide and water in the presence of atmospheric oxygen is known as aerobic respiration. The aerobic respiration occurs in two steps. First, the glycolysis that occurs in the cell cytoplasm and second, the Krebs cycle which takes place in the mitochondria. In glycolysis, a glucose molecule is broken down into two molecules of pyruvic acid. And in the Krebs cycle, the pyruvic acid is further broken down into carbon dioxide, water and the energy molecule ATP. Anaerobic respiration Let us now understand the anaerobic respiration. The breakdown of respiratory substrates in the absence of oxygen is termed as anaerobic respiration. It involves incomplete breakdown of glucose into ethanol and carbon dioxide through one pathway and its breakdown into lactic acid through another. In anaerobic respiration, the first step of glycolysis is same as in aerobic respiration. In certain anaerobic microorganisms, the pyruvic acid thus obtained is converted into ethanol, carbon dioxide and energy. The anaerobic respiration also occurs inside the muscle cells during vigorous activities when the oxygen is scanty. At such instances, the pyruvic acid breaks down into lactic acid and energy. We are now in a position to summarize the process of cellular respiration. This schematic figure shows the various pathways by which the glucose molecule can be broken down into simpler products in the presence or absence of oxygen. Respiration in Lumens There are some specific organs for gaseous exchange in different animals such as gills in fish, skin in earthworms, gills and lungs in frogs and tracheal systems in insects. But as compared to those, the respiratory system in human beings is very complex. The respiratory system in human beings consists of a mechanism for letting the fresh air from outside to flow into the lungs and a mechanism for expulsion of air from the lungs. Parts of the body involved in the respiratory process are external nostrils, nasal cavities, internal nostrils, pharynx, larynx and trachea, the 
respiratory organs include a pair of lungs which have bronchi, bronchioles and alveolar sac. Process of respiration The air is taken into the body through the nostrils. The air passing through the nostrils is filtered by fine hair that line the passage into the lungs. Rings of cartilage present in the windpipe ensure that the air passage does not collapse. Within the lungs, the passage divides into smaller and smaller tubes which terminate in balloon-like structure called as alveoli. The alveoli provide a surface where the exchange of gases can take place. The walls of the alveoli contain an extensive network of blood vessels. The oxygen in the alveolar sac is taken up by the blood in the blood vessels to be transported to all the cells in the body. The blood takes up oxygen from the alveolar sac and releases back CO2 to the alveolar sac. The exchange of CO2 and oxygen from blood to alveolar sac and vice versa takes place by the process of diffusion. Mechanism of Breathing Lungs cannot expand or contract on their own. As we breathe in, we lift our ribs and flatten our diaphragm and the chest cavity expands as a result. Because of this, air is sucked into the lungs and fills the alveoli. When we breathe out, the thorax cavity contracts and air moves out. The intake of fresh air into lungs is called inhalation and expulsion of air from the lungs is called as exhalation.